Hey, it's Joe here at Reds talking about one of my favorite things today, and that is Euro nymphing and how to put together a complete setup from your rod, reel, line, and leader materials, okay, and how to choose the right rod, the right reel, the right line for where you are fishing. Um, one, Euro nymphing is super fun. It's not just about catching more fish, it is incredibly enjoyable to hook fish nymphing on a tight line. It's, you just, you're, you're ticking the bottom, flies coming through, it feels just right, and then wham, you feel that fish pick it up, you're immediately tight, right to your reel, there's nothing sloppy about it, it's extremely intentional. There's a reason so many of us are addicted to it, and it's not just about catching more fish, although it can be productive, I do it, because it's very enjoyable and fun. But let me talk you through this. So, first decision we need to make is going to be rod. Now, there's some links in the video description. I'm gonna put links to uh, some categories, uh, some reels that I have set aside or earmarked as urine nymphing reels, uh, links to our urine nymphing rod, and there's an outfit builder uh, in that link too, which makes putting together a lot of the stuff much easier. So, uh, just a reminder, we ship all over the world every day, and our shipping times are incredibly fast. You can trust us to get it there um, for you. So shop at Reds, we would appreciate it. Okay. So first choice, let's just start with rod, make this easy. Uh, when you're choosing Euro nymphing rod, the first two questions that you have to, to ask is what length and what weight? That becomes well before brand, well before budget. Um, we're gonna choose a rod that best suits the fishery where we're gonna spend most of our time. If you're fishing a big Western style river like this one behind me right here, I would say start at 10 and a half feet and look at 10 and a half to 11 feet for your uh, rod length selection. Uh, if you're fishing, uh, say, streams that are uh, the size of a county road or smaller, um, those are going to require probably a little bit more accuracy, um, a little bit more control, meaning we're maybe tucking the fly up behind sticks and branches and boulders, um, kind of thinking East Coast type stuff uh, where you need to be very accurate. Ten foot rods are extremely accurate, easy to control, easy to finesse. Um, 10 footers make better dry fly rods. If you're gonna turn around and match a hatch and throw a dry fly and a dropper um, at some point or a little indicator, 10 footers are just nice sort of feed line and handle. So there's, there's a balance there. Um, 10 and a half feet is kind of a sweet spot. I'm not sure what we sell more of 10 footers or 10 and a half footers, but that's the first determination you wanna make is probably rod length, um, depending on the size of the river where you're at. Uh, the downsides to the 11 footers and 10 and a half footers, they're a little less accurate, a little bit more awkward, and a little bit harder to transition into as a first time Euro angler. So you can't go wrong either way. There are advantages and disadvantages to, to either one. Um, so once we've determined, okay, I'm gonna be spending most of my time on big water versus small water, I've decided that say uh, a 10 foot rod is right for me. Uh, the next choice we're gonna have to make is gonna be rod weight. Now, fortunately, rod weights in Euro nymphing are uh, pretty isolated to uh, two weights and three weights, uh, with four weights being kind of an exception. And four weights are gonna be great for folks that are dead sticking little streamers and spending a lot of time in stonefly nymphs or fishing for very, very large, say above, above average trophy size trout, trout that are 18 to you know, 20 some inches long and really focused on trophy fish, a four weight's great. The downside of going heavier in weights is that you lose a lot of touch and feel. Um, when I coach and teach classes, somebody feeling the bottom and ticking along with a two weight uh, and learning to control um, their leads and feel the bottom and make contact, two weights are much quicker and easier to learn on. They provide a lot more feel and touch. They're more sensitive to the strike, but they're more sensitive to resistance on the bottom and they protect light tippets uh, quite well. So um, if your, your max fish size is gonna be around 18 inches, uh, you know, with your sweet spot being 10 to 13 inches, which is that's frankly where most of us are living, uh, a, t a two weight is fantastic. Downsides to two weights, they are a little bit more fragile. Um, three weights, the best seller by far, probably sell five to, I don't know, 10 times more three weights than any other rod weight. So we've chosen length, we've chosen weight, We've honed in on that. Uh, the next thing we're gonna need to do is first talk about uh, brand and then budget. Uh, so my encouragement with buying rods is if you have a brand you're loyal to, you know, maybe you're a Sage fan. This is a Sage Sense right here. 
Um, and uh, maybe you're loyal to Sage, you've had good success, stick with the Sage family. They build, they build a great rod. Uh, if you've had great success with Thomas & Thomas, or Echo, or Reddington, don't be afraid to stick within the, the, the brand uh, that you like. That's a good starting point. Uh, but the next conversation is going to be budget. Um, and just to clarify, there isn't really a big difference in action in any of these. They're both designed to just throw small nymphs on light monofilament at short distance. They're really all designed for the same purpose. They're purpose-built rods. And back to that, you can try your own nymphing with rods under 10 feet that are not made for your own nymphing, but it's gonna be, frankly, an exercise. For me, anyway, it was a lengthy exercise and frustration. I wasted a lot of time. So if you're gonna get into this, get a purpose-built tool for it. Okay, when it comes to budget, spend as much as you can possibly justify. Um, if, if, if budget's not an issue, go right for Thomas and Thomas, go right for the top end Sage. You won't regret it. There is more touch and feel. There is more sensitivity. There is more durability. Uh, you're going to be happier with all the, the components, like uh, how the real seat fits, the quality of the cork, the quality of the guides. You're going to have less issues. There's just no two ways about it. Does that mean to say that you can't go out and do extremely well on an Echo or a Reddington? No, absolutely not. Um, I've been outfished by people with cheap gear many times. Uh, so it's, it's not the Arrow, it's the Indian. Um, but that said, you will learn faster and enjoy the experience more and eventually you're probably going to want that top end rod once you're able to fish the difference out of it. Um, I myself, I'm sticking with TNT and Sage for most of my personal fishing. I'm happy to test all the different rods and all the gear and they're great rods. Man, but if I got a day off and I'm not doing any gear testing, I'm fishing the TNT or the Sage. Um, it's going to be either of those products. So. Once we've kind of gotten into brand, we've gotten into rod length, weight, we've got all that solved. Um, we've made the decision we're going to go with a certain rod. The next thing we're going to do, especially if you use the outfit builder uh, in the video description, it'll take you right through this. We're going to have to choose a reel. And uh, there, are, I brought out like four options on reels, not just to talk to you about specific models, which I'll mention a couple of them. But uh, you have several different directions you can go. One is you can go for something purpose-built like the Sage ESN reel right there. Um, it has adjustable and movable weights so that I can get the balance of my setup absolutely perfect. For rods 10 and a half and 11 feet, you're probably gonna need or want a purpose-built reel like the Sage ESN or the Reddington Tilt. And there are a couple of others uh, that you can find uh, by clicking Euro reels in the video description. Okay, so you can get a purpose-built reel. They have adjustable weights. They have a full frame design so that you don't get the monofilament leaders if you're running long leaders uh, getting caught and slipping between the reel and the spool. So those are great choices. So just to expand your options, you have a couple of other choices here. Uh, if you have a rod where you can add weights to the rod, you could probably get away with just using uh, a real classy large arbor reel like this Lamps and Speedster on this rod is called the Shadow X from Echo. I've got a weight in there. And so I can make that rod weight, I can weight the rod there and achieve balance. Now, why is balance important? Uh, if I'm having to put upward force to keep the tip of that rod up like that right there as my drift approaches me, uh, I'm not gonna have the same sensitivity. You could just imagine if this were balanced perfectly on my finger, even the tiniest tap out here, I'm gonna be able to feel. And so balance really is important. I, I didn't realize how critical it was until I actually got, I would say, good and proficient at Euro nymphing. At first, I was a little dismissive. Okay, so uh, that's another option. Um, we'll talk about lines here in just a second, and that's where this reel will enter. You can put this lamps and light speed and the speedster in the same category. When buying uh, a traditional reel for a Euro nymphing rod, you want a five weight size reel even for your two or three weight euro rod okay so we've either chosen one of two things one a large arbor lightweight reel uh, because we can put weight in the back end of the rod or if you have an ultra light 10 foot two weight like the sage uh, 10 foot two weights uh, you can get those to balance pretty reasonably with just a five weight reel works pretty good i don't know how many ounces they are uh, I, I generally, um, I, I don't know how many ounces they are. You can look all that up and, and kind of dweeb out and check all that if you'd like. Um, I just know that they will balance uh, reasonably well. So we've got a reel chosen, 
okay? So we decided, hey, we've got this rod, we've got this reel, now there's some bunch of different directions you can go on lines, right? And uh, I want you to make a good choice here. Just understand there are pros and cons to all this different stuff. There isn't like one line that's gonna magically make you a better fisherman, uh, but there are some that employ or allow for a little bit more versatility. Uh, I'm gonna start with the most basic of, of setups, okay? And uh, if this is gonna be a dedicated Euro nymphing rig, the Rio Phipps Euro nymphing line is our best seller. Uh, it's essentially just a super skinny uh, fly line and uh, it's an 80 foot line and I'm just going to hold that up there. You can just take my word for it. It's super skinny but it has um, those orange loops. There's welded loops on each end meaning you can just loop the loop connect, connect it onto your backing. You can loop the loop connect it onto your leader. Very easy to cast, very easy to handle. It's light enough and stiff and stiff enough to achieve good presentation. It's a really easy choice, real, real simple way to go. Okay, the next one is gonna be the Scientific Angler's Mastery Series Competition Nymph. I've used this line a lot. I like it. What's great about this, it seems to be, it's, it's probably rated as the same diameter, but I swear it's a little bit skinnier than the Phipps line. Um, and it seems to be a little bit stiffer. The downside of this is there are no welded loops on the end. So unless you're proficient with building uh, knots using Albright knots or loop building your own welded loops and things, uh, this line is a little bit more of a specialty line for competitive anglers uh, or I would say advanced anglers. Um, I, I like both lines. They have pros and cons. You're not really going to go wrong either way. Uh, the next line is going to be, this is going to be the line that I go with the next uh, time I set up a reel when my, these lines are worn out, uh, which uh, might, might take probably not much longer looking at this one right here, it's pretty filthy, uh, but is the Rio Technical Euro Nymph, and uh, what this line is, is it's super stiff, um, it's on, built on a monofilament core, and uh, it has, you can't really see it in there. You can take my word for it, and I'll do a separate review later on when I, when I get out and fish it. But it's super slick, and it has a built-in leader that you can then modify. So there's no knots where the, the yellow fly line portion transitions into the orange leader. There's no knots, uh, which is super handy so that you never have a knot sliding through your guide, which is really nice. Uh, especially with landing fish on ultra light tippet, you don't want knots catching in the guides as the fish makes a surge away from the net, for instance. So Rio Technical Euro Nymph, that's probably the one I'm gonna buy next. There really isn't a downside to that. It's just a newer line. I haven't had an opportunity to personally field test at this point, but sounds pretty awesome to me. So we made, uh, we're getting closer to making a determination on the line. One of those jumps out at you. Uh, the next thing we can talk about is these, these Euro nymphing rods don't have to just contact nymph or tight line nymph. You could use them with a hopper dropper. You could use them with a little yarn strike indicator, which I happen to have on that right there, a little New Zealand rig, um, proof that I can actually use a Euro line and a little New Zealand rig right there. So, uh, but if you want these rods to actually cast a dry fly, maybe a little little small streamer, um, a hopper dropper, what you can do is you can actually take your five weight line or a four weight line would be even better, uh, a four weight line off another reel or you can just buy a dedicated reel. I generally like to go two line, one to two line weights up, um, depending on how far you're gonna be casting. If you're gonna be casting this floating line uh, at distances out to 30, 40 feet, 50 feet maybe, go with a, a one line weight bump, meaning if you have a three weight, put a four weight line on there. If everything you're doing is gonna be tight, you can go for a two line weight bump. You can run a five weight floating line on a three weight Euro rod, no problem. And that's what I've been doing with this one occasionally. So, I've got my reel. Maybe I already own this, okay? It's got a floating line on there. What I can do for versatility, and I've done other videos on this, is I can get a Rio Euro Nymph Shorty, and that just gives me a super skinny fly line which is easier to handle with small contact nymphing rigs. And I can loop to loop it onto here and I've got a versatile rig. It also is a little bit of a money saver too. Um, I've done it before. Um, I keep these in my bag if I'm gonna be dry fly fishing uh, and, and mixing it between the two. It's a, it's a nice way to go, um, just an option. So 
now we've got a fly line. So we've got rod, reel, fly line. We've made a decision there. Now we've got to set up some leader stuff. I've done other videos just specific to leaders, but since we're building a whole outfit here, I'm gonna talk about kind of the bare bones essentials that you need. A great way to go if you're new to this is just get a couple of the Rio Euro Nymph tapered leaders. Um, they're, a no, they're a no brainer. You, you loop to loop this onto the end of your line. It's got a tippet ring built in there and then you can just take a piece of tippet and you can set up either a one or a two fly rig uh, right, up, right at the end of this leader. So you get a couple of those leaders, no problem. Eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna wind up wanting to customize those leaders a little bit. You're gonna wanna put some little whiskers or tags to make it easier to see, easier to read behavior of the leader. You can modify it at that point and you're gonna wanna pick up, um, again, if you're watching, this is likely semi newer to you and I recommend a little bit heavier cider materials like 2x and 3x just so that your cider material is stronger than any of the tippet you're using okay remember that cider material has to be stronger than any tippet material you're using otherwise you will start to break up in the cider and you don't want to do that it's a giant waste of time the thinner the cider material the better uh, but there's also a balance there because you need the cider to be semi stiff so you don't get what's called sag or bowing in your line. Uh, what I like to do is I generally build my own leaders. I use um, Maxima, I use 12 pound most commonly, sometimes 15, uh, you can use 10. There's lots of different leader formulas. I have a really simple leader I build with about three feet of this, about three feet of this, and then a tippet ring. And that works very, very well for most of my uh, fishing situations. Um, I fish big western rivers. Um, the trout are smart, but I'm not fishing for very captive trout where I need to be fishing non beaded little itty bitty flies. Um, generally, I, I get into some of this swift water, make a good presentation, and stay efficient and stay moving, um, and I can be successful. So, uh, there are lots of other leaders that you can do. You can, if you're very technical, you could say around 30 feet of monofilament. There's lots of different kinds you can do. So much that I could confuse you folks in a hurry more so than uh, possibly I've already done. But uh, that's how you can put together uh, a Euro nymphing rig, you know, from start to finish, choosing your rod reel. Um, anyway, links are all in the video description. I'll probably put a blog article up uh, as well, and I'll try to remember to link that in the video as well. But anyway, hope you learned something today. Shop at Reds. We appreciate the support.